Lovely. Really beautiful. When it comes to prisons, this goes to the top of the list. Devil's Island revisited. Well, there's at least one consolation. I won't be here forever. Oh, in case you didn't know, I'm not a resident. I'm just visiting. This was a new fiver. I need to ask how you've been the last few years. How have you been, Roy? Well, you've got eyes. I've been the way I look, chewed up and spat out. You'll be out of here in a week. Big deal. How do you know? Just get telephone. Sergeant Dizzy. Yes, he's kept in touch, bless him. The only one who has. But out to what? Out to what, buddy boy? That's what I've come to talk to you about. What's this? An olive branch from the living world? A bit late, isn't it, Tim? Didn't they tell you? I don't exist. Dead without an obituary. Without an arm. Without a wife. Without a pension. Without a future. Oh, come on, Roy. It's not as bad as that. Oh, don't give me come on. You weren't there in that stinking prison camp, Tim. Arm off, no painkillers, flies, hallucinating, scared, needing help. The mission was very unofficial, Roy. We knew what we were getting into. Yeah, didn't we, Judge? Anyway, you were well out of it. Thanks to you. I owe you my life, that's why I'm here. You, um... Do you really want to help? Mm. There is one thing you could do. One big thing. Name it. Later, how about him, boy, when the time's right. How's my son? Promise me one thing. You won't try and crash back into his life without me warning. Uh, warning? Warning who? You? What you got to do with it, Tim? Roy, I'm serious. Michael's been pretty mixed up. Before you make any kind of move towards him, we have got to talk. You're giving me orders about my own son, Temp. Now, you listen to me. That boy is the only damn thing I've got left in this world. And nobody's going to tell me when or how I'm going to see him. Not his mother, not any damn court, and not even my old friend and buddy, Simon Templer. It was a great time. It's all go today. Where'd you get the time? Rome. Business that wouldn't wait. Well, did you see him? Yes, last week. And how was he, my uh, ex? Not so good. Sandy, there's something you're going to have to do. Roy gets out today. He's dead set on seeing Mike. Oh, no. Well, you can't stop him. An injunction. Oh, come on, he'd ignore it. But Mike thinks his father's dead. Yes, exactly. 
So you're going to have to go down to the school, explain to him he isn't. Gently, but very quickly, before Roy gets to him. I always said the lie would catch up with me someday. But I still think I was right. I'd rather Michael think of his father as a dead hero than... Oh, why the hell did they have to release him? For God's sake, he was in for life. It's called parole, Sandy. It's a kind of forgiveness. Forgiveness? What should I forgive him for? A three-week affair, a pregnancy, marriage I didn't want. Ah, oh, he could talk. Marry me, darling. Give the boy a name. Oh, he gave him a name, all right. It'll take Michael a lifetime to live it down once the whole rotten past is opened up. Maybe it's time it was. For your sake, as well as the boy's. You know, in your own way, you're as crippled and as bitter as Roy is. That's a pity. It was too beautiful for that. Flying visit, Mr. Gates, or are you intending to stay in England? I don't exist, so I can't hear you. You look very real to me, sir. Then you're obviously out of touch with your government's attitude towards me. I don't exist. So this is very childish. Just tell us where you'll be staying. Mr. Gates, my department requires you to give us some indication of your plans. Well, then I suggest that your department investigates the activities of somebody who does exist. Uh, Someone like Simon Templer. His plans are very well worth investigating. Now, sir... They include murder. How do you mind? Dizzy, you old son of a gun. How are you? Good to see you, Mr. Gates. Yeah. Welcome home. Hey, that's enough of the Mr. Gates stuff. Look, I'm a civvy now. We're partners, right? All right, Roy. Good to see you. Yeah. You know, Dizzy, you're pure gold. Shining gold, that's what you are. <laughs> you know, on the dot, no questions. Did you bring what I asked? Some of that. Beautiful. There's a plan of the office block down there, too. You're a marvel, Dizzy. Oh, don't laugh. I've got to see my son for the first time since he was two years old. We don't want him to throw up at first sight, do we? Clear your throat. What are you doing? I'm saving your sergeant the trouble of making notes. You can take the tape when you leave. That is your official face you've got on. Or did somebody die? You tell me. Now, what's that supposed to mean, George? What is your relationship with Roy Gates? He's not in trouble already, is he? I'm asking the questions. My relationship? Well, it goes back a long way. Aiden, we were on a mission together. For the terrorists? No, George. For the army. Do you remember a man called Donald Meredith? Foreign office, captured by the Yemenis? Not really. Well, it was our job to recapture him. It was a kind of unofficial raid. But you weren't in the army. No, but Roy Gates and his sergeant were. SAS. Under a major cleaver. You see, I was a kind of civilian volunteer. I had a special knowledge of the area, George. I stayed in the fortress where Donald Meredith was held. It belonged to Prince Ahmed Yedin. Look, uh, are we talking about the same man? The Roy Gates that was jailed in Germany for acts of terrorism? Sure, but by then a lot had happened to him. I think he was a little crazy. You see, our raid was a failure. We were surrounded and he caught a grenade, literally in his hand. Saved our lives, but practically blew him to pieces. In his hand? In his hand, George. We were running, he was up slope of us. Sergeant and I just kept going. I mean, he had to be dead. But he wasn't. So, 
So he was captured by the Yemenis, eh? That's right. No joke. We didn't know. Not for two years. Not until his name appeared, splashed all over the headlines in Germany. So when you and the sergeant kept going, you reckon he could have had it in view for that? It's possible. Why? Just wondering. Right, Simon. Thank you. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Come on, George. What's all this about? Well, maybe nothing. He landed an hour ago at Heathrow. I'd rather like to keep tabs on him, so if he makes any contact, any move at all, you know my number. Hello? Sandy, listen, Roy's here. Already, but... So I think you should drop everything. Close the shop and come down to the school with me right away. I'll be over in about ten minutes. Yes. Stop just around here. Are you sure you're all right, Roy? We've had a few jars, you know. Which one of you is Michael Gates? I'm Gates. Thought so. You had to be, didn't you? Can you spare a moment? Who are you? Shall we walk a little? You can't be. My father's dead. Dead? Who told you that? Your mother? Here. Take a look at that. Read it. It's really you. But where have you been? What happened to your arm? It's a long story, Mike, and a bad one. The man I trusted betrayed me to the Arabs. They put me in a prison camp. Look, I tried to get to you, Mike, but I couldn't. I wanted to write to you to tell, to tell you that I was alive, but they wouldn't let me. Oh, Daddy! It is you. It really is. Now you're back. Can I leave this crummy place? Come and live with your mum? Can I? Aren't you forgetting something, son? Your mother divorced me. Did, didn't she tell you? Well, it's true. While I was in the prison camp, I couldn't stop her. Seems to me she's been keeping quite a few things from you. Well, the only way to deal with that is to keep a few things from her, hmm? What sort of things? Just father and son things, like, uh, I've got some business I want to settle. I'm going to need your help. Mine? Gosh, what sort of business? A mission. Secret. But, uh, maybe it's too dangerous for a kid. Kid? Dad, I'm nearly 11. 11. OK, all right. Oh, here's a fiver. I put it in your pocket and don't spend it. In a day or two, I'll send you a message. When you get it, I want you to sneak out of here and join me. And that'll pay for your fare. Join you where? The message will tell you. Will you do it? You bet. A good lad. We're going to kill someone. Bye, Mike. Do you have to go? I mean, so soon. Take care.
See if you can find Gates. Tell him his mother's here to see him. Okay. He's talking to someone uh, down on the ponds. What is it? Uh, oh, um, they say he was uh, talking to someone, uh, a man, uh, down by the ponds. Uh, but that was over an hour ago. What did this man look like? Oh, uh, he had a... It looked like a false arm, sir. An hour ago, you say. And you haven't seen Michael since? No. Uh, yes, I saw him, sir. He was out here. I told him to go and get changed. He was filthy. How long ago was that? Oh, ten minutes ago, just before you arrived, sir. Go and look in the changing rooms. No, he's not there, sir. I just looked. Mr Armstrong, I'd like to have a word with you, please. Oh, yes. Um, uh, come inside, Mrs... Um... Tell me something. Do the younger boys have a kind of secret place, a hideout? <laughs> well, we used to go up in the old barn and over the lane. Uh, you want me to look there? No, just point me in the right direction, would you? Simon. Go away! So this is where you hold up, is it? Look, I know what's happened. I know how you're feeling. No, you don't. You lied to me. You and Mum lied to me. Not really. You did. You lied. Not at first. We really thought your father was dead. When we found out he wasn't, well... You were only four, Mike. She divorced him. Yes. Have you ever known your mother do anything without a very good reason? What reason? Well, she'll have to tell you that herself. Now, why don't you come down give her a chance? No. No, I won't see her and you can't make me. Mike, your mother loves you. You're all she's got. Now, don't hurt her. We'll be waiting for you. You, wasn't it? Who betrayed him to the Arabs? Well, let's put the cat among the pigeons. Now on to phase two. Morning, Templar. Morning, Cleaver. You will notice, gentlemen, how we've improved its capability. And I might add, at almost half the cost. It's very impressive. How did you dream it up? Luck was in a nightmare. Chinese proverb, he is kicking the stone and breaks his foot, Templar. That's very Chinese. Does it apply to me in some way? You know damn well it is. My secretary opened that card. God knows what she made of it. But little jokes like that can start rumors that can topple whole corporations. I am not going to have everything that I have structured over the years put at risk by a pipsqueak with a grudge. Now, is that clear, Templar? Clear as mud. I don't know what you're talking about. What card? Look, I'm not a complete fool. There were only four of us on that aid mission. Three? You never left your desk. All right, then, three. Discord can barely spell his own name, and Gates has neither the turn of phrase nor the imagination to write in such a way. That leaves just you. Do you deny that this is your handiwork?
Major Jonathan Cleaver, DSO MBE, died upon the anniversary of his glorious Aden mission of a hole in the heart. Revenge immediately pending. How odd. Of course, our anniversary is tomorrow. Now, why should anyone want to send you this? Why now, after all this time? You sent it, Templar, because Gates is at last free. But he's a sick man. You knew very well that the finger of guilt would automatically point at him. That is why. You are taking this seriously, aren't you, Major? Interesting. I wonder why. What exactly did you do in Aden? Put it back. Thank you. Now we have your fingerprints on it, just in case you wore gloves when you wrote it. This will go straight to my lawyer. If anything happens to me... Well, why should anything happen to you, Major? Hmm? Why should it? I warn you, Tom. I am very well protected. One move. And this might very well be your obituary. Simon, nice to see you. Uh, I'm between calls to Washington, so you'll have to be very quick. Right, Aiden, the Donald Meredith rescue ploy, the one you recruited me for, remember? Now, would it be possible for me to see the official record on the raid? It would not. There are no official records of unofficial raids. The unofficial record, then? No. Unofficially? Again, no. I see. May I ask why not? Orders. Since when? Yesterday, when Special Branch called in here asking exactly what you're asking now. Somewhere up there, heads were put together. The result? Special branch was sent packing. And now, so are you. Bye, son. Could you give me just one clue? One clue? Hmm. The sensitive areas involved here. Sacred cows, like army estimates or NATO, cannot, must not be spooked at pasture by grubby little stories from the past, no matter how true. You follow? because Jonathan Cleaver is now manufacturing arms for the government, right? Yes. Oh, good, put them through. When he said he was well protected, he wasn't kidding, was he? Thank you, Brigadier. SAS star pupil. Now put that thing away. All right. Now come on in. Take me. Roy, you're drunk. Damn thing. I'm useless. I'm like a child. You better let me have that gun, Roy. Come near me and so help me. I'll cripple you for life, too. Glad you're here, anyway. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Uh, pass me my drink, old buddy boy. Old buddy boy, is it? <laughs> it's a funny way to treat your buddies. Telling Mike I betrayed you to the Arabs, lying to him, getting him all screwed up like that, I ought to tear you apart. Yes, you ought. You get your chance. Playing ducks and drakes with a kid's emotions is a hell of a way of getting your own back on the world. You're right. He's a fine boy. What's it all about, anyway? What's his cleaver business? <laughs> you remember that bint, the one we were always trying to make? What was her name? Uh, uh, you know, the one with the mother. Roy Cleaver. Now, why did you send him that card? Your face! Your face when her old man burst into the room. <laughs> 
Oh, those were great days, weren't they? Cleaver, Roy. Don't shout at me, Temp. Don't shout. Arabs used to shout and curse and spit at me. You know who got me out of there? It wasn't the great British government or the army. It was an East German temp. I didn't want to join the, the Bader Meinhof crowd, the ruddy maniacs. I wanted to be in England with my wife and child. But it's his price. They wanted me to teach them the tricks of the trade. And you know, I was grateful to him. Because you see, he got me out. Out. Now you tell Sandy that when you see her. All right, Roy. We'll talk about that quietly and sensibly. Right now, I want you to tell me what the hell is going on. You're the only straight one, Tim. Soul of the earth. Thought I'd just drop by to let you know. And remind you. What? Remember I said there was one big thing you could do for me? Yeah, well, it's getting close. Hey, Gates, telegram for you. Don't get one test. What do you say, Gates? Give it to me. Give it to me what? Oh, come on. Count your heads. Ten hits, Sergeant. Two left alive. You're dead, Mariner. Now, what should he have done? Anybody? Now, listen to me. In our business, there's no B echelon, no reserve of ammo. Every bullet counts. And in a group of people sitting around a table, there are more gaps than people. So, what do you do? Fire single shot, son. Right, Tenby. So, who do you shoot first? Start left and work right, son. No, you don't. You shoot the man who moves. The first man who moves. Then who? Someone's going to put their hands up, right? You shoot them? No, son. Yes, Tenby, yes. <laughs> Right, lads, you've done it, they're dead. But it's cost you your last bullet. And you hear running footsteps. Enemy help is arriving. So what do you do? Run like the clappers. <laughs> With a bullet in your back? Evans, tell him. Well, run to meet him, son. Cut down his reaction time. Right. Evans. Go on, lad. 30 feet. Turn around. Right, now, from this distance, He'll kill me before I can reach him. So what do I do? Break his aim. With what? Your empty gun. Right. Now watch. Evans? Kill me! Got any lads? Close the gap. Always close the gap. If you can't reach him with your body, reach him with your gun, a rock, anything. I'll show you once more. Someone else out here? Come on! Who else wants to kill me? Sergeant? Well, well. A civvy volunteer. All right, lads. Watch this. Sergeant, let me know you're out. Blimey, Simon, you've captured something pretty good. Nick, haven't you? Happy anniversary. So let's celebrate it by you telling me all about good old Major Cleaver. <sighs> no way. Roy made me promise. May Miss... we just stay here? Get off me, will you? No way. 
All right, you win. The Major sold us out. His own blokes. What for? You mean cash? Half no this ransom. But it hadn't been paid. Not then. But it'd have to be if the raid failed, wouldn't it? So Cleaver made sure it failed. He made a deal with them. How long have you known this? Roy told me when I went to see him over in Germany. But Jens told him. He told him something else, too. What? The Major used the money to start a flow of arms to them. Guns that were used to kill our own lads for a fat profit. That's how he started what he's doing now. Only now he's legit, of course. He's built his whole business up out of... Roy's blood, yes. And now Roy's going to kill him, right? What? Are you crazy? Oh, you mean the obit card he sent him? No, he just sent that to shake the beggar up, that's all. And that gun you gave him, what was that for? Stirring his tea? I don't know anything about a gun. Mm, does he? You're a rotten liar. You're a loyal friend, but you're a rotten liar. Now, don't you think Roy's been through enough already? Without being jailed for life? Oh, come on. Roy's not going to kill him. No, he's not. Not if I can help it. Simon Roy just phoned me. He's got Michael. Are you sure it could be a bluff? No. No, that maniac's got him. I just rang the school. They've been searching for him. Simon is taking him away to Berlin. He was phoning me from the airport. He said they'd be on the next plane. And there was nothing I could do to stop him. Well, there is. Call the airport police. Tell them what's happened. Tell them to hold them till we get there. What's it feel like to be a hero, Dad? I wouldn't know. Well, you're one, aren't you? What? Well, look at your arm. Everybody's looking. What's it feel like? Feels great. Look at that. It must, Dad. It must feel great. Excuse us, please, will you? Thank you. Thank you. Where are we going to live? Hmm? Yeah. Well, I can't go back to school now, can I? You do want me with you, don't you, Dad? Well, yes, of course I do, Mike. You're my son. Well, then, where are we going to live? Just a moment. Listen, old son. Remember I told you that there was a mission you could help me with? Well, your being here is it. You've done a fine job. How? I haven't got time to explain now. This, this will uh, see that you get back to your mother's place. But, Dad... You're not leaving me here. Look, I have to, Mike. I, I... Listen. I, I want you to know that I'm very proud that you're my son. And I want you to know that whatever happens, I loved you. Now, please don't follow me. Goodbye, Mike. But, Dad, wait! Mike! Be good to your mother. What did the airport police say? That they'd hold them. Just as soon as they'd found them, they'd call me back. They haven't called back yet? No. It's 20 minutes. There should have been time. Now, wait a minute. Has Michael got a passport? What? No. No, he's on mine. <sighs> He's using the thread of Michael to control my movements. I'm where he wants me, when he wants me. He's working to a very tight schedule, too. At London, Jonathan Cleaver, Incorporated. Head office. Mr. Cleaver's office. Let me talk to Mr. Cleaver. Who wants him? Simon Tapper. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Templer. He's not available. Now listen. Tell him it's a matter of life and death. His own death. I'll put you through to Mr. Dayland. Dolan here, Mr. Templer. What appears to be the problem? Mr. Dolan, get your boys together and seal off that building. There's a man on his way right now to kill Jonathan Cleaver. Height, five foot eleven. Short, dark hair, one arm. One arm, Mr. Templer? You mean he isn't you? <laughs> Grow up, please. If I wanted to kill Jonathan Cleaver, do you think I'd advertise? You might. But not to worry. We have a set-up here like Fort Knox. Oh, have you indeed? I very much doubt that. Besides, this man was trained in urban warfare. He won't get through, Mr. Templer. Nor will you. But uh, thanks for the warning. What's worrying, Templer? And what's this about a warning? Some game he's playing. What it is, or what he's really after, I haven't quite worked out yet. Get these photos started, will you? I shall be leaving the Ministry of Defence in about ten minutes. Warren Phillips. Any blips on our radar yet, Dylan? Everything's under control, Mr. Cleaver. <laughs> Just to make quite sure. There's a woman down here making a commotion, sir. Claims she's been attacked. Just thought you ought to know. Hmm. Right, stay alert. We'll take the service elevator, sir, if you don't mind. Are you really that worried about Templar? Just a precaution, sir. gone down to his car. Come <laughs> 
explosive. All right, all right. Thanks. Goodbye, Dizzy. What the hell are you doing? Get lost, man. Go! Go! Sorry, Temp. Why? You remember the job I wanted you to do? Yes, I remember. Kill me. Is that what all this has been about? You killing Cleaver was just a lead up? Look, this is what I can't live with. This damn thing. Kill me, Tem. And no lectures, for God's sake. Some people can live on their bellies, but not me. All right, so I'm a coward. Pin a ticket on me. But get on with it. Do it, will you? A gun, Temp. Use a gun. No, Roy. Use it. Well, use your hands, then. Listen to me, Roy. Look, you'd, you'd do it for an animal, wouldn't you? Please, do you want me to get down on my knees? You're just not thinking straight. All right, then. I'll make you kill me. Because if you don't, I'm going to kill you. Now, drop it, Roy. All right, now, listen. <laughs> Use it. Please, Simon. Please, Simon. Well, give up, Roy. It's not going to work. Call an ambulance. 
All right, Roy, hold on. Hey, you're not cutting out that easy. We'll get you to a hospital. Oh, that's better. Thanks, old buddy boy. It's all my fault. No. You could have managed it anyway. Somehow. Well, now to face the music, I suppose. Now tell them I'll testify before you visit. Thank you, Simon. Right. Take care. Under the ground. That's awful. Hey, Mike. Now listen. That's what he wanted. Always remember that. He planned it down to the last detail. That's what he wanted. He's happy now. Yes, he's happy now. And you know something? We should be happy for him. He was a hero, wasn't he? You bet he was. None finer. 